Hi there, on today's Top Tip Tuesday, I'm going to be showing you how you can take any fluid sim, so either an X Particles fluid sim or one that's been done in Nexus, and how we can mesh that fluid and transfer the particle colour into that mesh for really interesting rendering effects. So let's fire up Cinema 4D and we'll get cracking. Here we are on our scene then and we have an emitter with a vibrate tag and we are spitting out particles in hexagonal mode. We have no speed and we have a particle radius of one centimeter and then there's an NX gravity set to 400 centimeters strength which is pulling them down to the ground and they're interacting with our objects. We've got these horrible colors here intentionally and the way we did that is if we go to our emitter display tab, the color mode we're using a shader the shader that we're using is a gradient shader and if we click on the settings we've got it set to 3D linear and to cycle which means it just kind of continues along. Okay so let's make this into a fluid sim now so we'll go to our nexus options and we'll bring in an NX fluids. The fluids will change to an SPH solver, keep everything else default, hit play and now this is a fluid sim. We want this to be gloopy though, so we're going to use some constraints as well. So let's go to Nexus. Let's go to Constraints. We'll put our iterations to three to make them more accurate. And we'll add a viscosity constraint. And we're going to say that any particle will search within a radius of, let's put that down to 20, and can connect with up to, let's just say, three other particles with a viscosity constraint. And now if we hit play, that alongside our fluid is, yeah, look, look at that really nice gloopy fluid it's giving us. That's looking great. Okay, so now we want to mesh this particle sim. So we're going to go to generators. We're going to bring in an open VDB mesher. And we need to get our XP emitter and drag it into the window because that's what we want to mesh. And there we have our mesh. Let's hit NB to see the lines. Now, we can make this kind of a higher uh, polygon count or lower polygon count by adjusting the voxel size. We're going to reduce this down to three, which will give us more polygon detail. OK, and now we're going to have a look at the point options and we have a point radius of 10. And this means that each particle has its radius multiplied by 10. And that creates kind of a spherical shell around each particle at that size, 10 centimeters radius, which is then meshed. So what we're going to do is we're going to incrementally reduce this point radius until this mesh starts thinning out. Let's keep going, keep going. And if we go too far, look, if we go to two, it disappears because we just don't have enough um, volume information to mesh it. So let's increase it again to three. And we're going to go at maybe five and then hit NA. And what five has given us is enough depth in our mesh to now be able to thin it out with some smoothing techniques, but still kind of retain the full, uh, the full fluid body. So we're going to go to our filters tab. We're going to use filters and we're going to delete out this default median. Now, a lot of people grab the Gaussian straight away because it's the really kind of aggressive, really smooth filter. But actually, I want to keep some of this detail and I want to make sure that all of these blobs of particles are still meshed, but we want them smooth. So instead of Gaussian, we're going to use the curvature, which will kind of leave alone the flatter parts, but smoothen out the bumps. So with our curvature, if we start making it more aggressive by increasing the iterations, we're smoothening it out but we're retaining all of that particle detail. Okay, now if we hit play, let's see what we get. And what we want to make sure is that we've got kind of mesh where we've got particles, but we've got a nice smooth mesh that's gonna look good when it's textured. So that's looking pretty nice. I'm pleased with that. We'll leave that for now. Obviously, the higher quality your fluid sim with the more particles that you have, the cleaner your mesh will become. Let's make our particles invisible. Now we want to take the particle color from the particles and put them into the mesh. How are we going to do that? Well, we go to the tags menu of our OpenVDB mesher and we want to transfer point color. 
And if we click on that, if you look in our object manager, the open VDB mesher now has a vertex color tag. And if we click on it, look at that. We have transferred that particle color to the vertices of our mesh. There's a little bit of artifacting, obviously, because this is based on the vertex of polygons. So to get rid of that, we need to go to our open VDB mesher, tags menu, and just add a little bit of smoothing to smoothen it out. Okay, so now we've smoothed it. So now this can be used in materials. So let's just make a standard material. You can do this in any third-party render engine, whatever you're using, but we can reference this color vertex map. So if we go to our material manager, we'll make a new material. Let's put it on our open VDB mesh. And in this material, let's give it some reflectance. So in the reflectance channel, we'll add a Beckman, which gives us this kind of metallic look. But then we can add a dielectric Fresnel with IOR similar to water. OK, so now we have a shiny looking material. And in the color channel, in the texture, we can use that vertex map. And it's in Effects, Vertex Map. And if we click on here, we can now drag in our Color Vertex Map. And yes, so now we have our shiny material referencing those colors. And if we hit Play, this is all processing live. And we've got our particle color being transferred to the points of the vertices of our mesh used in that material.